ऑलरेडी <laughs> You have already shared your screen, and you can start your lecture. Thank you so much, Rajesh sir, and thank you Auto TV for giving this opportunity. Uh, last a few slides. Last Thursday, we had gone through a couple of slides on sterilization layouting. There, we had progressed to the types of sterilization wet packs, autoclave. Then, we had come to sterilization monitoring, which is one very critical part for any of the autoclaves. What we generally suggest, or rather, what CDC, Center for Disease Control. as a nodal agency for disease control all over the world they have laid out some kind of guidelines which are necessary to be followed internationally they have to be similar whether it is us uk india or any other third world country the basic guidelines would remain the same that your sterilization has to be proper so for that it is always suggested that you should use indicators which are difficult to pass not the ones which are easy to pass so a failing indicator is a good sign you come to know that there is some lacuna with your sterilization process that means your autoclave eto plasma or anything there is some problem because which the indicators are failing you get an opportunity to rectify your machine perform some good validation maintenance on the machine to get it back on track lot of problems can come in inside the autoclave and a failing indicator will tell you that there is some problem so there are several types of indicators one is a chemical indicator the other one is a biological indicator chemical indicators are divided into one to six parts type 1 type 2 type 3 type 4 type 5 type 6 so there is no good indicator or a bad indicator all the classes means that there is some specific purpose for each of the indicators which are used so now the chemical indicators being from type 2 1 type 6 are different in uh, terminologies different in terms of what is required with them a biological indicator is generally a type 5 indicator so we'll see the difference between the two the indicator should be kept at the worst location in your drum and tray so that there is a maximum challenge which is given to the machine that they should be able to pass the indicator which is kept at the most remote location inside your drum or a tray this is one of the most widely used indicators at a type 1 indicator which you can see over here the autoclave tape or signal locks what we call the eto gas tape these are stuck above the drum or the tray or on the packs whatever you see on the eto reels also these are type 1 indicators which means that it has gone through a process it has come out it necessarily doesn't mean that the sterilization has happened properly the color will change either from white to black or white to dark black or from green to black so this is a transition of the color where it is happening a cycle in process the cycle complete will be with a final color indicator the newer types of type 1 indicators are three line labels there are three lines on this the labels are they, they come in a form of rolls they are placed inside a automatic labeling gun and this labeling gun is going to punch in the batches the times the people who have done this it is going to also punch in the date of sterilization and the date of expiry these are three critical things which are required for batch tracking of any of the tray for example if you are using five trays on a patient if you have a thr tkr patient you may be using five different trays on a patient each of the tray is going to have this indicator which has gone through a sterilization cycle the color is going to change from either purple to black or purple to green that means it has got processed this is going to go on each and every tray that tray is got sterilized it is going to the patient you are going to remove this sticker from the tray and going to paste it on the patient file so now you have a complete batch monitoring of each and every tray which is used on the patient so for say after 3 or 6 months if a patient comes to you saying there is some infection inside him for an implant case and it he says or rather he is trying to put an onus on the hospital that it is because of your sterilization practices or infection controls you always have a look back proof that you had sterilized this item in the cssd on this date via this batch everything is okay with this you have a cssd recall you have a cssd record in coordination with different type 5 type 6 indicators inside the cssd right so this is basically a type 1 indicator it is there for eto also it is there for steam also this is for batch traceability and recall 
The type two indicators are basically bovidic test, which is required for a pre-vacuum autoclave only. It is not required for a vertical autoclave. It is not required for an autoclave, which is gravity displacement. That means if there is no external vacuum pump, you should not be doing a bovidic test at all. The bovidic is basically for pre-vacuum sterilizer. It is that the air has got completely removed from an autoclave. See, air and steam, as we told in the last class, also are biggest enemies of each other. If there is air at one place inside a drum, the steam is what going to reach over there. You have to remove the complete air. Only then the steam is going to penetrate in the area in the vacuum, which has been created by air. And that is why it is important that your autoclave should be able to remove excess air, any kind of condensable gases which are there inside the chamber. Everything should get removed. Only then the steam will penetrate. So we had told there are different types of bovidic available. One is a test pack. The other one is an A4 sheet. Then there are also PCD devices, which are lumen devices. A cardiac or a neuro setup can generally use this to ensure that all the lumen devices, guide wires, catheters, whatever has been placed or for that, number, uh, for that example, uh, any kind of suction cannulas which are placed inside the autoclave, they undergo the complete cycle properly by removal of the air. Right? So there are several types of type 2. Now, bovidic, what it does is it identifies the air pockets. If there has been an air pocket inside, the sterilization would not have proper, uh, happened properly. From a yellow, which is the original color, the sterilization will happen. It will become black. If it is completely and uniformly black, that means air has removed from all the locations and steam has reached. If there is some kind of yellow remaining in the middle or the side pockets, that means air was removed from the peripheral areas not from the middle area. That means sterilization was not proper. It is a very critical test. If you have gone via NABH cycles, if you had the audits, they would have asked you whether you do a bovidic test or not. You have to explain to your specific attendants and the OT technicians or the CST technicians. If you have a vertical sterilizer, bovidic is not mandatory. If you have a pre-vacuum sterilizer, bovidic is mandatory. Thereafter, we came to type 4 chemical indicators, which are called the multivariable indicators. Two or more critical variables. Now, what are the three variables? One being steam, the other one being temperature, the other one being time. Steam, temperature, time. When all the three conditions are critically met by an autoclave, the indicators are going to pass. A type 4 indicators are made in such a way that two or more critical variables, if they are there, then the indicator is going to pass. So if you are putting this inside your vertical autoclave inside a drum, and if you are able to achieve a good temperature that is 121 or 134 degrees Celsius for say a specified time of 15 or 20 minutes, this type 4 indicator is going to pass. That means the original color may change from purple to green. That means it has been sterilized. You can be sure that it has been sterilized. Type 4 indicators, since they are dealing with temperature and time only, these are relatively reasonable in pricing as compared to other indicators. So most of the places and hospitals, what they have done is to make the economics well in a hospital, couple of trays, they are using type four indicators, couple of trays, they are using type five and type six indicators that averages the cost of your total uh, sterilization practices. And it ensures that you get good sterilization. This comes for steam also. This comes for ETO also. These are package monitoring. So that means you will have to place each and every indicator inside each and every drum or a tray, which is going inside the chamber of the autoclave. Right? So there are, uh, say, you get an ultrasonic cleaner indicator also. This is also a type 4 indicator. Just in case if you have an ultrasonic cleaner, ultrasonic cleaner is meant for cleaning of your vascular or very fine instruments, which cannot be cleaned by brushes. So there are indicators to see whether the ultrasonic is performing its job or not, whether it is able to clean the device or not. So what happens is this is basically protein fuchsia, which is there. The fuchsia gets removed. So the pink will become completely white. That means fuchsia is getting removed when you are dipping it inside an ultrasonic cleaner. That means the ultrasonic cleaner frequency, the ultrasonic cleaning, the detergent that you are using, everything is fine. Then the type 4 indicator is going to pass. So one question is Siddharth here. Yes, sir. You said this is to be kept inside the tray or a drum. Yes, sir. <clears throat> that means it cannot be stick on. No, sir. I mean, no, the type 4 indicators also have adhesive at the back side. Okay. They are there. Yes. So for if documentation. Want, yeah. If you want, you can paste it Absolutely. inside the drum also. 
Okay. So okay. pasting it inside the drum as in you just have to keep the indicator inside the drum at the remote location. Take it out. Once you see that the it has passed, right? If you are opening the drum inside the OT, you find that the indicator has passed. Then you paste this indicator in your documentation register. Okay. Perfect. Go ahead. Yes. Thereafter, we have the type five chemical indicators. These are called the integrating indicators. Most of the people currently in India or elsewhere also are using a type five indicator, which is a very good indicator to tell you whether all three critical variables have been met. That is steam, temperature, and time. A type five indicator will look something like this, where a color will range from yellow to black, or pink to black, or blue to black. So original color is yellow. It finally, after the complete process of sterilization, it becomes black. Again, this is also placed inside your drum, inside your tray, at the worst possible location. Even this will have an adhesive sticker at the back side. So this can be taken out and pasted on your registers. I have a slide where I will show you what kind of a documentation can be done inside the CSSD and also for the patient. Type five indicators are there for steam also. It is there for ETO also. Another type five indicator is called a BMS device, which is called a batch monitoring system. So now consider that this is this is a package indicator which you have to place inside each and every drum and tray which is going inside your autoclave. So that means if there are ten drums which have done inside your autoclave at one cycle, ten indicators are going to be required to be placed inside each and every. Drum. So ten indicators are going to be used. There is an alternative where you can use a batch monitoring device, which is a very challenging device. Again, it is say a 1.5 meters length lumen PCD. PCD stands for Process Challenge Device. If you are placing 10 trays inside your drum and uh, inside your autoclave chamber, you only need to place one PCD device with one indicator inside. This is going to simulate a complete difficult load, and if this passes. That means there are chances that the other drums inside also have passed. Now this doesn't go inside the drum. This is placed outside, inside the outside the auto outside the uh, drums at the worst possible location. The worst possible location inside your. So okay, if we are talking about a PCD device, you have to use this only in a horizontal autoclave, not a vertical autoclave. A vertical autoclave will not be able to pass this device. A vertical autoclave may be able to pass a type five indicator. So. A PCD device is placed at the worst location inside the autoclave, which is near the drain. Drain is the place where the maximum air pockets come in, and that is the place where you have to place a BMS device. So there are uh, BMS devices are there for steam also, for ETO also. A lot more detail can be gone into this, but I think we'll skip the finer details. We'll go to the next slide. Uh, we just have to remember that there are several kind of indicators available in the market specific to the purpose. Like if you have a neuro setup. If you have a, a cardiac setup where there are more lumen devices involved, in that case, we prefer using the batch monitoring devices with the process challenge device. For orthopedic, for urology, for general surgeries, it is absolutely fine to use a type five indicator inside your drums and trays. A type six indicator is also similar to a type five that also reacts to all three critical variables. That means steam, temperature, and time. What happens is that there are several types of class six indicators available. For example, one is for three and a half minutes. The other one will be for seven minutes. There is one which is available for fifteen minutes. So each and every class six indicator is calibrated to perform a predefined parameter. If the parameter in your machine, which has been set as one twenty one degrees for fifteen minutes, you will have an indicator of type six correlated to that. That you can use again inside your drums, inside your trays. Again, that color change will be from yellow to brown to black, or it could be other color changes also. But we have to ensure that anything which was visible originally is not visible in the end, and the reference colors are always shown inside good indicators. So that means this is the reference color. It means that the whole of yellow has to become black. That means it is sterile. Again, this is placed inside your drums at the most remote locations. And if this passes, you have a surety that other indicators or other uh, drums or trays which are placed inside the same batch would be passing, right? So now uh, thereafter we go to type five biological indicator. These are called gold standards of sterilization. 
till now what we were looking at all these indicators are basically paper strips and chemical indicators they do not have actual organized uh, organisms in them however in a biological indicator it is made and constructed in such a way that there is actual spores inside the strip that means 10 raised to 6 geobacillus chlorothermophilus or bacillus atrophius these are two of the organisms which are very difficult to kill inside an autoclave and inside an etu that is how it has been said the biological indicators have correlated performance to several other indicators if you are able to pass a biological indicator that means your sterilization process has been adequate and good so both the things that is the chemical indicators and biological indicators have to be used in tandem there is a slide which i'll show why both of them have to be used just for your information a brown cap generally means a steam a green cap generally means an etu there are separate biological ampules for steam and etu so what is happening is you have a spore strip on which 10 raised to 6 that is 10 lakh spores of a bacteria geobacillus chlorothermophilus have been placed inside the strip it has a media a media culture that is a growth mechanism right and there is a cap all these three things are separated from one another originally they are not mixed with each other what will happen is you are placing this biological indicator inside your drum or a tray and it will undergo a regular sterilization cycle now if the sterilization was proper the spores in on the strip are going to die completely get killed that means 10 lakh bacteria is going to get killed after that if you crush this ampule if you give the bacteria its growth culture or if you are giving in simple terms if you are giving the spores or the bacteria some material to eat or food they will not grow in size so what that means is just in case if all the bacteria has got killed with the autoclave procedure and if you still provide them the culture or the food after mixing them there is not going to be any change in the color the purple color will remain purple however under your sterilization cycle if your sterilization wasn't proper and if the bacteria did not get killed and then if you give them food to eat their color is going to change it will color it will change from either from purple to yellow or the complete solution is going to become viscous or turbid that means there is a positive growth in the bacteria there is a positive growth in the biological indicator now this is very important because all the chemical indicators are simple paper strips but all your biological indicators have actual bacteria which you want to kill these are very difficult bacteria to kill and if you are able to kill this bacteria then that means your autoclave sterilization cycle is good so you see over here before the test the color was purple after the test after the sterilization after crushing it after mixing the bacteria and the spores the color has changed to yellow and this is a positive cycle that means your sterilization was improper now you need to cordon off your sterilization stop it see what is wrong with your autoclave do a recall cycle a lot of things have to be done in case a frequency of use of a biological indicator is in the steam cycle you should do it every once in a week that is if you are using an autoclave in that autoclave you should use it once every week eto cdc mentions it should be done every cycle but that's a challenge and economics do not work out well because this indicator may cost you around 140 to 150 rupees per ampule so in that case that also you can do it every week however if you have an implant case cdc specifically mentions that you should do it on every cycle where there is an implant why because implants if they go inside the body the infection may not happen today but the infection may happen either 6 months or 8 months from today and there is really no easy way to understand or surveillance can be done why the infection has happened that's why this is the frequency of use is there any uh, question on this biological indicator or the chemical indicators yes sir sir what is the ideal temperature 121 or 130 any guidelines it is <clears throat> sir uh, what did happen is initially the sterilizers a few years old used to be only with 121 degrees celsius nowadays it has been taken to one th- most of the sterilizers are working at 134 degrees celsius there is And no time? good or bad 121 time? minimum amount of time you have to give is 15 minutes that is just sterilization whole time only the pre vacuum condensation exhaust phase is separate the minimum yes. time that a indian sterilizer needs to give 
given the conditions in india given that we don't provide chiller water given that our water may not be ro we always suggest that instead of blindly following any of the cycle parameters you should test your autoclave to see whether the indicator is passing at 15 minutes if it is not passing uh, increase the time to 20 minutes if it is not passing at 20 minutes make it to 25 minutes that means at 121 degree celsius when your indicator is able to get passed at 120 uh, 121 degree celsius in 20 or 25 minutes that should be your benchmark for doing the cycles and that is how you should set the cycles that is why when you buy a new autoclave or once any maintenance is done on the autoclave you should ensure that a covid test a type 5 indicator or type 6 indicator and a biological indicator should be run if everything is passed only then send your service engineer out of your uh, facility otherwise he should be able to pass all these indicators and only then he should pass. 134 sir time us 134 is 3 and a half minutes that is cdc guideline sir but again at 3 and a half minutes uh, it is very difficult for indian conditions and indian sterilizers to pass that is why they take it from 134 to 5 minutes or 7 minutes and after how many days like uh, two days we have sterilized how yes. many days we can uh, use same set without uh, re autoclaving so that would depend on the a lot of uh, conditions have to be there but one critical important thing is the packaging that you are using so if you are using a drum the universally accepted standard is only 3 days that is after 3 days you will need to re autoclave yes if you are using a uh, linen again 3 days is the time there are some hospitals which keep it for 7 days also however this is see because a lot of people are following that's why others may also follow the same protocol but this is very dependent upon how your hospital protocols are how your sterile storage area is how many times a person is actually going and touching that tray whether you are storing it inside your ot or inside a, a humid atmosphere whether at 18 or 24 degree celsius all the things will come into play what, what we suggest is it's a very difficult way to understand what is the total expiry time that's why as rajendra sir suggested there are always microbiological test performed to see how much time the expiry of a material can be kept so a very simple example is keeping seven or eight different bowls you put some gauze pieces in that pack it in your packaging if you are using drum it is fine if you are using a linen cloth even that is fine pack all these things separately keep it at the uh, you make an autoclave cycle autoclave everything on the first day keep everything at one of the worst locations in your hospital which ideally will be a ward because most of the people are going inside and coming inside the ward and it is not maintained keep it at the worst location in your hospital every one day you take out one of the uh, bowls do a culture test on that the day when you find it positive out of six or seven different bowls that you have kept if you find that on the fifth or the sixth day you have found that the culture is now positive of the item that you had kept in minus 1 will be the day till which is your counted as your expiry time that is how we scientifically calculate how many days is your expiry time there are some hospitals who have kept the sms wrap for 6 months all together performed the culture test and even after 6 months it was absolutely fine there was no positive growth thank you sir yes sir right so we have gone through the biological indicator which is a very important part now chemical indicators versus biological indicators why we should be using both now chemical indicator which we talked about type 1 to type 6 is going to give you an immediate result inside a csd however the biological indicator requires you have to actually incubate that for 24 or 48 hours only then you get a result by that time you cannot keep your surgery postponed so that's why you use a chemical indicator also and a biological one also a uh, chemical indicators are relatively easy to understand for your ot technicians or your staff or your attendants a biological indicator requires a microbiology support it has to go to your microbiology lab they will incubate it and they will create a report on the microbiology pathological uh, uh, whatever paper that they have which is considered as a very good report right the chemical indicator is economically priced at say around 7 rupees 10 rupees or 15 rupees whereas a biological indicator is expensive in comparison almost 140 150 rupees chemical indicator is easily documented on the paper but a biological indicator will require a certified separate report so that is why you have to use a chemical indicator also and a biological indicator both the things 
choosing of the correct indicators now there are several indicators available in the market and now indian companies have also come up with lot of indicators uh, there is no good or bad we just have to see that the uh, guidelines which are given for manufacturing of these indicators are stringently followed by organization simple examples to notice whether there is a lot number on each of the indicators if you have a lot number and just in case company internationally sitting in germany or, or turkey if they really realize that some of the batches had the problem it will it will be a way for them to batch track and bring back the defective indicators that rarely happens but it shows that the lots have been maintained in the manufacturing process very well so you should try to use the indicators which have lot numbers we generally suggest not to use the moving indicators the wicking indicators because these uh, most of these indicators which are type 5 indicators are dependent on a small Uh, either it is going to be a small charcoal or a wick product which is going to get burst and then it is going to move forward so this is basically any kind of an external product if it goes inside the tray then it is a problem for you the other indicators are dependent type typically only on the ink there is no moving product inside so ideally try to use the indicators which are very challenging not easy to pass if you put a lighter below the indicator and if it passes that's a wrong thing because we are talking about moist heat not just dry heat so your indicators the way easiest way to try is put a lighter on, at the back side and see whether the indicator is passing or not if it passes easily by a dry heat it is not the right indicator for us to use because we have to depend on moist heat not dry heat so considering if you place this indicator inside the oven it should not pass because oven is going to work at 140 160 or 200 degrees celsius <coughs> we want that steam should be there inside the autoclave when this indicator has to pass right it has to conform to lot of international standards uh, if you are taking an indicator from any of the company ask the company to provide the technical reports certificate of analysis msds all these things uh, failing indicators is a good sign it means that there was insufficient air removal or vacuum it could also mean that your orthopedic trays which are so full of instruments and they have so many i mean if it is 15 or 20 kg it becomes very bulky mass in those things also the indicators may not pass or there may be droplets of water or moisture inside so these are good way for knowing whether your indicators are passing or not and that will help you decide whether your autoclave is performing well or not a recall policy this is a little documentation part just in case if there is a failing indicator a recall procedure has to be followed any of the nabh assessors who come to the hospital mandatorily ask whether you have a nabh recall policy this your quality control person or your microbiologist person or your csd technician should be aware about even if he doesn't if he has not performed the recall per se he should know what the procedure is for a recall so if you are using the indicators ensure that inside your cssd you have a legend of indicators that means what is the original color of the indicator and what is the color of the indicator once it passes or once it sterilizes this kind of a legend should be placed inside your cssd itself so that when any assessor comes in it is easier to pinpoint whatever indicators you are using a lot of sop files are also maintained but this is relative i mean this is required for bigger hospital for smaller hospitals normal documentation protocols could be fine where you have a batch monitoring system where you have a bms system or you have a type 5 type 6 indicator place for each of the cycles that are performed this may put a strain for documentation inside your cssd but this documentation sooner or later is going to become very very mandatory and important for the next few years because of the importance it plays for legal medico legal conflicts when it comes to any kind of uh infections or hais or exercise that have happened uh we uh, one of the hospitals that we know uh, they have a patient record so as i told you if for one particular patient you are using 10 different trays you have a batch monitoring sticker for each of the every tray and the name of the tray so this means that just in case if they come to you saying that mere cabg taste mein kuch problem hua tha there is some infection you have an indicator which is showing you that the sterilization has happened this is going to correspond to the actual indicator which was placed inside your autoclaves the class 6 and class 5 ones so that correlation will ensure that complete batch traceability is there and you are not at fault for any of the infection right uh, we sir how much time do we have rajendra sir 
another five minutes, or should we uh, stop it over here? No, go ahead. No problem. All right. So uh, the next slide is basically the source of linen, which is used inside your hospital. This, these are the places from where if you have an outsourced linen, chances are that your linen is being washed this way. And if this is the kind of linen that you are using inside your hospitals per se for your CSSD and trays, then it's a difficult part. So packaging, what happens is linen, whatever you are using inside, if it is fresh laundered linen, we are not saying that you should use every linen new, but whatever linen you are using should be freshly laundered, dried, and properly cut. So this is how your linen looks. So there are uh, small holes. These are like threads which are there for linen. There are small holes inside. From here, steam can also penetrate and even the pathogens can go inside, right? After a few washes, this is how your linen is going to look. So whatever green lint that you see on the top of the autoclave or lying around in your drain or in the floor, this is basically the linen which has not got laundered properly. This is going to result in small fibers, which are going to come out. The threads are going to come out. And this, if it goes inside your patient's body, then it can cause a lot of surgical site infections, depending. So if you are using a linen, which is being opened inside your OT, and if lint particles are passing through it, it can go inside the field, operation theater field. That is why it is suggested to use either very good freshly laundered linen, which does not have betadine spots, which does not have holes inside, or you can switch to a disposable wrapping system, which is called SMS wrap, spun bond, melt brown, spun bond. The layers over here are not placed uniformly, but they are laid one over the other in this fashion. So you see, steam will be able to penetrate inside, air will be able to come out, but the pathogens will not pass through this. That is why most of the hospitals have now shifted to these disposable SMS wraps. Again, from economic point of view, we understand that SMS wraps are going to be expensive. And that is why some of the hospitals, it is okay if you have a policy of reusing this for three to four times till the time you do not find any spots, betadine or uh, holes inside this, right? So we suggested a pack of SMS wrap. It has bacterial filtration efficiency of 96%. And here is where you know that if you have autoclaved a product wrapped in the SMS wrap, it can be kept at that sterile location for probably seven days or for 30 days also. So you don't need to keep on autoclaving things again and again. It can be kept uh, sterile and stored at the location properly. Again, as far as I understand for uh, smaller setups and nursing homes, your turnaround time is very high. That means that if you have autoclaved a tray today, maybe you're going to use it either today or tomorrow itself. So then the point of actually storing it for such a long time doesn't make sense at all. Again, that's a hospital protocol. Right. So we don't understand there are intangible costs associated with the laundry. It could start with your laundering, outsourcing, uh, the removal of the blood using, you know, text, you know, say for any kind of a PHP molecule, bleaching of this, pairing of this, infection due to this. Finally, when it comes to four, probable that SMS wraps could have been cheaper than your laundry of the linen itself when it comes to packing material. Uh, packaging of the drums inside the CSSD, this is a prevalent practice even today. The drums were very old. The technology is very old. Uh, most of the bigger hospitals have stopped using the drums and they have altogether shifted to solid containers or smaller trays. So this is where we see where the drum problems actually come in. Uh, in the previous class also, there was a question why and how the drums should be used and if there is any problem if you are using the drums and opening the flanging and closing the flanges. So after autoclaving, if you keep the holes open for a very long time, and if this is the kind of area where you are keeping your drums, you can be sure that it is not going to be sterile properly because the movement and circulation of air from here is going to bring in pathogens and going to go inside the OT, uh, inside the drum itself. So then at this kind of condition, you saw environmental condition of storage cannot be more than three days for sure. If you have loose locking system, the hinges have been broken. If the flange is not opening properly or closing properly, the whole uh, point of actually using a sterile system drum itself has been, uh, it's, it's, it's no point. It's no use actually. Also, the drums are placed in such a way that linen is also placed together. Instruments are also placed inside. 
that results in poor layout of instruments so if you have your damaged instrument delicate instruments are getting damaged your artery is not working properly because of some reason some box joints are improper it could be because most of the instruments have been placed inside the drum at not the uh, correct location or not properly because of which complete problems have started happening right here also okay so now if you still decide to go and use the drums you have to ensure that the documentation is proper you also have to ensure that the linen that you are placing it it has not stuffed inside there is place for steam to penetrate see these are the holes if you can see over here and if you are placing the linen over here yes you have the air also can be removed outside and steam also can go inside however if you pack this thoroughly with linen there will be very less space for steam to move around that means sterilization is not going to be proper you also should avoid using broken lids the drum and the flange has to be cleaned absolutely well so this slide actually tells you these are the holes this is the flange if you are cleaning your flanges the hole of the flange basically comes out of a drum and then the drum gets cleaned if you are using this and doing this regularly it is all fine however for months all together if you have not cleaned your flanges it will result to rusting in these areas and imagine if your steam is going to penetrate through this rust it is also going to carry some small particles from inside to outside outside to inside okay just in case if you still decide to use the drums do not overload them avoid putting linen and instruments together have a separate drum for linen have a separate drum or a tray for instruments put the assurance indicator in the most challenging locations below all right uh, alternative to the drums are these small trays now basically these small trays which you are already using they are very good source they are very very reliable they are not very expensive the layouting of the instruments is proper when you are placing them inside the autoclave also the layout of the instruments will not change right however there is one important part imagine that you have a tray and you have placed a lid on that now where is the space for steam to penetrate and go inside if you have closed the lid there is no place for steam to go inside or air to come out then how will the sterilization actually happen only if the cover of the tray is old if the trays are deformed only then there will be space so the next thing is if you decide to use your trays open the cover keep it below then pack it with linen that is one way or otherwise you can shift to perforated trays so there are small perforations and holes inside the trays now you keep all your instruments everything inside over here even if you pack this with the lid still the holes are going to ensure that steam will penetrate inside and air can come out and further to that there are other things like wire mesh trays also this ensures that cleaning process is also like so <clears throat> if you are using a drum <clears throat> if you are using the instruments inside the drum you will have to take it out and wash it however if you are using the trays the same trays can be used for washing of the instruments below the tap water itself easier to use for linen also any kind of such trays can be made perforated ones so where uh, folded and good linen can be kept inside there are polymer trays also available which you use for your striker drills or boxes and solid containers lot of options are there if you decide to move on from drums to the trays <clears throat> there are some packaging essentials uh, if you are using inside the ot you should always go for double wrapping even if it is with linen even if it is with your sms wrap a double uh, packing ensures a septic presentation that means the sister who is going to actually take it out put it on your meo trolley tray and open it up she is going to be separated from the person who is finally using it that's called an aseptic presentation this will ensure that any kind of bacteria pathogens which have remained on top of the covers remain outside your ot and only the fresh uh, laundered linen which has been used for uh, packing of your trays actually comes inside your table near the tray second thing is layouting of the instruments ensure that your bowls are always kept inverted otherwise your bowls are going to collect excess moisture and there are going to be water floating inside the heavier instrument should be placed on the sides lighter instruments in the middle you see a challenging indicator has been placed over here at a difficult location they are also using neo hangers mostly so that all your instruments are stacked together gauze pieces can be placed inside the tray itself as many as you require more of them can be packed separately in a eto roll 
there are separators also available where instruments can be placed relatively well so now in this kind of a case the sterilization is going to be beautifully well it is going to be excellent there are no chances of sterilization not happening properly if you have a good autoclave and if you also observe observe over here a small linen piece has been placed below that is for absorbing your excess moisture so inside your oti if you open the trays and if you see fine small droplets of water inside that means it is a wet pack to avoid that kind of a thing you can always have this linen a fresh laundered linen which is placed below excess moisture which drips or which has not dried is going to be absorbed by this uh, absorbed by this particular towel this is one of the photographs that i have taken uh, liberty uh, rajendra sir i have taken this photograph of yours where he has in his own ot he has ensured that each and every set is indexed and instrument so if your regular ot technician is not in place and if you want somebody should actually pack a tray properly he will not miss a single instrument if it is indexed properly these are very large charts which sir has placed inside and near his ot and css the area which is a very good practice it may take years for you to build this or you may take from rajendra sir also and once this is actually used you can be assured that your ot technicians will provide you every instrument which is required in a train nothing will go missing all right uh, for upgrading of a cssd i am just trying to give you ballpark figures a vertical autoclave ranges between 15000 to 90000 rupees the uh, semi automatic autoclaves or the ones which are without the vacuum pump may range from one uh, say quarter to 2 lakhs to around 3 and a half lakh rupees and the bigger autoclaves which are high you know, high pressure high volume fully automatic with plc printer for consistent results they may start from 8 lakh rupees to 15 lakh rupees so we understand if you have a smaller nursing home it is not practically possible today to shift to an autoclave which is 10 lakh rupees obviously but you should have this in mind just the way you have been progressing with your uh, drills with your robotic systems or for that matter for your instruments you are taking the best of the class instruments sooner or later it is good to upgrade to yours Be, uh, better css the position better kind of autoclaves etu machines table top which may be required for orthopedic for your drill systems or for that matter any kind of smaller systems uh, tubings uh, cannulas catheters or uh, silicon tubings ambu bags an etu may cost between 3 and 1/2 lakh rupees to 5 lakh rupees the ultrasonic cleaners are a very good choice if you have smaller vascular instruments these may range from 50 55000 to 1 lakh rupees uh, rapid biological is not required so in case if you are planning for a capital expenditure lot of costs are involved including the maintenance amc cmc cost of ownership the spare parts the operational cost may increase electricity water compressed air etc all the thing however there are intangible cost to using the smaller autoclaves that means frequent down times just in case if there is a infection that has happened the cost of infection the staff productive time and upgradation that you have to do later most of the times we have seen that hospitals are going to take the smaller autoclaves later they understand or they realize that the instruments which are coming out are very moist then they try to fit in the vacuum pumps retrospective basis when that happens when that happens we have seen the chambers getting crushed that means the autoclave working at 134 degrees celsius at 25 psi it is just a matter of time whether it bursts because it has not been made for that so retrospective fitting is not nice so oh, so that yes sir so we'll have some time for question answer so yes sir please very, yeah we are done yes. yes yeah that was wonderful everyone was actually glued to the sets to understand yes, everything about autoclaving packaging and the indicator use yes, i sir. i presume there must be some questions if there are any questions or otherwise then we go to sangeet's lecture yeah nitin yes, i want to i want to yeah siddha yes sir uh, uh i want to discuss two scenarios with you yes sir which i am following since many years first right, is sir. gas gas autoclaving that okay. is we are, we are following since my parents days this last 50 55 years yes sir there is no temperature and a uh, time markers what we think is the pressure per square inch which is usually i think 15 pounds per square inch right yes sir and after Correct. the pressure pre, ha the pressure is reached that yes. specific pressure we yes, keep sir. that for 15 to 20 minutes and on that time the inside markers are that they are turned for good right okay right this is one second thing right. now since 30 35 years i am using 
electric uh, sterilizer which is vertical some okay. instruments they don't fit into the drum long instruments Correct, so sir. i keep them because of the want of space i keep them by the side of the drum okay. Uh, okay. usually wrapped in the cloth linen right. or sometimes like that only and okay. after uh, the process is over uh, right. uh, uh, proper pound uh, pressure is achieved we remove by glow uh, just by sterility right sir so uh, whether this is right or whether this is somewhere it is going wrong because we uh, fortunately we don't have any we didn't have any infection till now that is one thing but <clears> just <throat> i wanted an expert comment from you and uh, third thing a query you talked about the perforated uh, that uh, trace Please. yes sir okay but yes, if sir. they are perforated the steam and the water might come out also and that may stain uh, or wet the linen around and which is kept over a normal trolley so that can again uh, don't you think that it will infect uh, the thing or it will not be a proper do you, do you think that okay uh, uh, right sir so i understand your concern sir and i think typically for any nursing home currently which is 20 30 bedded uh, that is absolutely true 40 50 years there has been certain procedure that has been followed and that is a proven procedure at your end nothing has happened till now no infection has happened that is all fine sir i mean i would suggest ki if that is a if, if there is a good protocol that you already following there is no harm in following it uh, only two things that i uh, would like to say is first thing is in the past 20 30 years the kind of infections have also changed the pathogens have also changed and they iteratively they are becoming very resistant to the kind of procedures that we already have if that happens clinically that has to happen in this process also so gas autoclaves being used initially because electricity was not there so they were using gas and that is a good procedure even today some hospitals use it and there is nothing wrong in that if you are able to get reproducible results of your indicators which are passing you can still use your gas autoclave sir only thing is your indicators have to pass so that means the complete sterilization is taking place even if gas is coming out sir the gas autoclave works in such a way where it is going to heat some water that water is going to become into steam and that steam is steam is the only thing which is going to actually kill the pathogens so finally it is moist heat only it is steam only and if you are actually able to correlate that with any of the indicators it is all fine there is no problem so it's okay but only thing would be vacuuming would not be there correct so drying is not there a few things may be coming out wet or moist those things ideally are not required or not allowed inside the ot nowadays sir because uh, wetness means that a lot of wicking would have happened something from outside would have come inside also and there is no way to understand this because surveillance is very tough okay. we suggest that uh, slowly slowly you can progress to a horizontal autoclave if not immediately you plan for that expenditure you plan for that budget in maybe one or two years see like you said there are longer instruments which will not go inside your drum and for such kind of long instruments that's why you have horizontal autoclaves which can be placed laterally like this so that means you don't have to turn it around it is absolutely straight and it will ensure proper sterilization of that by wrapping it inside the linen that you're doing or using a bigger tray okay thank you siddharth that was wonderful to yes. have your lecture on autoclaving and now we'll be proceeding with our second lecture scheduled today uh, one okay. question sir siddharth yeah. yes sir that's Yeah, uh, yeah. What is the uh, protocol for uh, sterilization of operation theater? This is a, which chemical we use and what? What is the uh, St- uh, your disinfection of your OT, right, sir? Yeah, yeah, disinfection. So there is a separate module that we have for this. But just to give you an insight, yeah. now if you do, you have an HVAC system already in place, a HEPA filter. Yeah, I am <clears> having. So initially, sir, a few years back, also a lot of fumigation was done. Uh, using a couple of molecules like butyraldehyde or uh, hydrogen peroxide and silver nitrate or a polyhexamethylene bigunite recently when we have interacted with a lot of microbiologists what they told is since your hepa filter is already at work and if you have an hvac system the air fumigation was reduced considerably it is only done now once in two or three weeks and terminal disinfection is done a terminal disinfection can be done by phmb molecule which is polyhexamethylene which is quaternary ammonium compound the third generation compound so that is terminal disinfection would mean that you are going to clean only specific areas like your handles or your ot lights or your ot tables or your meo trolleys or floor this is going to get cleaned with the terminal disinfection but you are not going to fumigate the area okay 
But okay. there are, I mean, there are uh, different ways. Sir. There are a lot of hospitals who do the fumigation today also. There are a lot of hospitals who avoid doing fumigation because they have a blower inside your HVAC system running for 24 hours. So that means your air is continuously getting circulated inside the OT. So that means your air position is good. And that is why you don't need to fumigate that. Probably if you have an infected patient, only then you fumigate the area. Okay. Otherwise, most of the people have accepted terminal disinfection without using too much of fumigation. Okay. So, so thank you so much, Siddharth. Right, sir. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you, Siddharth. Thank you so much, sir. So thank we'll, you. we'll proceed with our nice listening to you. Yeah. Yes, Very thank wonderful. you, so much, sir. Yes, really thank wonderful. You. Thank you, uh, Siddha. Now we'll yes, start sir. with our second presentation of day. Uh, Sangeet, you are uh, ready to present here? Yeah. yeah. Uh, sir, what I would suggest is, Chandak, sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, if you can request Siddha to share his email and phone number, because and that can be shared in the group, because uh, all the participants would be interested, not today, if not today, then in the future, and they will have a lot of queries regarding setting up uh, of the autoclave and other sterilization equipment in their theater. So perhaps Siddharth will be useful in uh, yeah. sharing his knowledge and helping them out in the future. Okay. He's already uh, shared in the group and we will, I'll also share it. Thank you, Siddharth, for providing that. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, am I audible and visible? Yes, yes, you are visible and we can see your screen now. Right. <clears throat> so, uh, the most important topic and the most neglected equipment in our theater is an image intensifier. And it is uh, our concern that this radiation is what uh, we are ignorant about, what we should be aware of, and how we can reduce this is what I'm going to speak today. Uh, no doubt, uh, this has enabled us in becoming more proficient, reducing our operative time, reducing or minimizing our operative field, decreasing the morbidity to the patient. So all these four points are to the benefit of the patient. And on the other side, to us as a surgeon, and our OT personnel, it is only the abuse of the image intensifier. And it is from the company which you have purchased, we are under-informed about the radiation exposure or we are ignorant about the use of image intensifier. And hence, the radiation side at the cost of giving the best to the patient is always ignored by all of us. So we need this uh, equipment when you are doing uh, minimal surgery, particularly intramedullary nailing, percutaneous K wire, uh, uh, MIPO technique by less invasive procedures, vertebroplasty, pedicular screws, and there are so many where the amount of radiation required is too much. It is not a single shoot which we are taking. We are taking multiple shoots, and that increases the exposure to the team, to the surgeon, and to the OT personnel. So these complex procedures are unavoidable, wherein the exposure of the uh, exposure time of the intensifier is too much. Now, who are at risk when you, whenever you're doing this? Uh, it is a surgeon and the assistant, which are at the maximum risk amongst all the OT personnel, because we are closing to the C arm, we are closer to the C arm and the exposure area during the shoot which we are taking. <clears throat> now, uh, in our day-to-day -day life, we have a normal exposure, we have a normal background radiation, and that is 0 0.01 millisilverate per day. So on the ground level, we are receiving uh, radiation from various sources, which is equivalent to 0 0.01 millisilverate per day. So as you grow, uh, as you go higher, the radiation is higher, and the cosmic rays in the higher altitude, particularly when you are flying, 
uh, you can see on the right hand chart so at the level above the ground at the sea level if it is 0 0.03 then when you are at about 4000 it increases to 3.7 millisilver rate per hour and as you go higher it is increases to 13 uh, millisilver rate per hour so uh, that is the radiation it is in hour per hour huh? so higher the altitude more will be the radiation so at the ground level you are receiving exposure at that much now what is the cancer risk whenever we are taking x-ray whenever you are doing a ct uh, to the patient the extremities which is commonly uh, x-rayed the radiation is 0.01 that that is millisilverate it is a 0 0.01 which is equivalent to the natural background radiation which you would receive in 1.5 days and the chances of fatal cancer per examination that means per x-ray is one in few million uh, millions okay so if you are doing of the hip uh, the area being thicker the exposure time the dose required is quite high that is 0.3 millisilverate and that is equivalent to seven weeks of radiation natural radiation what you would receive you are receiving in that uh, half a minute or or uh, two seconds when the technician is shooting and the risk of cancer is one in 67,000. When you're doing a CT scan of the abdomen and pelvis, the effective dose is 10 millisilverate. That is in that half an hour of CT abdomen or pelvis, you're receiving radiation, which you would naturally receive in about 4.5 years. And the risk of fatal cancer is one in 2000. So my friends, CT scan, repeated CT scan is not good. Now we come back to the radiation. So that is the natural exposure. That is the natural cancer risk, what you would receive when taking a X-ray. Now uh, in the sea arm, that is reduced significantly. So the radiation produced by a standard sea arm is roughly equivalent to a dose of 0 0.043 millisilverate per uh, PA image when you take a uh, normal PA image and in a lateral it is almost uh, double or three times which is 0.113 millisilverate. So in an AP image or a PA image your radiation is less in a lateral image the radiation is much more. Now whenever you are fixing this simple fracture with a DHS uh, whatever way you reduce the shoot, you can see here, uh, most of the CM have this and you must always try to look at how much time has been uh, the exposure. Now you can see here the radiation, the cumulative dose total was uh, 25 millisilverate or milliguri. And the time where the shoot continuous shooting was done was about one and a half minutes. So again, that is very high. So you must always at the end of the surgery, look for the dose report. How much has been your exposure? How much time you have uh, done the, use the CM and every time, whenever you're fixing a similar fracture, you should try to reduce the exposure uh, significantly. Now, what are the components of the CM? So, uh, at the bottom here is the X-ray tube, which should always be below the tube, uh, below the table. On the top of the X-ray tube is a collimator. Then, the beam is passed through the page, through the table, through the patient, and it is received by the grid. That is. This is the grid of the intensifier and that is uh, converted via video camera to an image which is seen on the monitor. So these are the components and how 
the machine works now fundamentals uh, which are you must understand this is surgeon are rarely in the direct path of the radiation so the radiation which are coming from the x ray tube they pass via the ot table through the patient and most of them are captured by the image intensifier uh, what we are exposed to is a scattered radiation from the patient which are about 20% 80% are absorbed by the patient 20% are scattered and the ot personnel including us we receive these scattered radiation every 100 photons reaching the patient about 20% are scattered to reach the image uh, detector 80% are absorbed by the patient okay so the main source of radiation to the surgeon and the team is this scattered radiation from the patient so what is the damage to the surgeon and the ot personnel the radiation induced injury to the skin generally uh, it is not immediately apparent usually they present as a transient erythema exposure of two grays or a two silver ray will appear in several hours peak at about 24 hours and it fades in several days so if you have exposed to two grays or a two uh, silver ray you will have within 24 hours erythema of the skin and that will fade away in several days okay if you have a exposure of six uh, silver ray or six grays Uh, the erythema appears at 10 days it will be at peak for 2 weeks and then it will fade away fade away in about 4 weeks and if you have a higher exposure there will be permanent epiliation of the skin uh, apart from this usually uh, this is my observation uh, you get tiredness when you have exposed yourself too much to the radiation on the day of the surgery uh, the tiredness may be because of the radiation you are very weak uh, the skin excoriation usually is not apparent the erythema is not apparent unless you are subjected to that much of exposure which is very very rare the and because of this uh, radiation the exposure to the surgeon can be to the extremities to the head to the neck in the eyes it gives a, a radiation cataract in the thyroid it can give to a papillary carcinoma and on the skin it can give to a, a squamous cell carcinoma or a ulceration like this which subjected to squamous cell carcinoma and because of this we lost one of my close friend recently this year he was suffering from uh, exactly the same picture he had at the beginning about 7 or 8 uh, years back subsequently he went he had a non healing ulceration uh, he had to undergo amputation of the digits and ultimately he succumbed where the malignancy has spread uh, everywhere and uh, for 7 or 8 years he was fighting with the skin cancer which was induced only by this radiation exposure of cia so one has to be very careful when you are handling this equipment the effect of radiation can be non stochastic that these are dose dependent and these can be cataract hair loss reddening of the skin and infertility a single high dose exposure or after multiple low dose exposure uh, can result in a non stochastic effects of radiation so stochastic these are dose independent can be damage to the cna increase in the likelihood of the oncogenic uh, carcinoma the fundamental when you are handling this equipment are dependent on the several factors and these are how much is the exposure time what is the distance from the body part being imaged that means where is the camera and where is the body part of the patient mass of the body part being imaged like extremity require lesser radiation if you are 
doing a spine or a pelvis or a hip the exposure is much more when you are subjecting uh, surgery around the torso and proportionate is the kilo voltage which is emitted that is indirectly more scattered radiation you are receiving so uh, the principles we must follow is a alara that is as low as reasonably achievable radiation exposure you must practice so these principles of alara i'll uh, come to it in subsequent slide the amount of radiation received cannot be made nil but can be minimized by using the principles of alara and the variables to minimize these uh, radiation exposure are one the apron what we are commonly using so uh, the personal protection by a lead apron should have at least 0.5 mm equivalent thickness of lead so that reduces the scatter by 95% so if you are wearing a good quality apron your exposure to the chest gonads uh, is less than 5% so a lead ex uh, lead apron uh, exposure in a ap view is reduced by 16 fold and in a lateral view it is reduced by 4 fold so the exposure lead apron also uh, the scattered radiation received are much higher when you are shooting or when you are taking a lateral view a circumferential lead apron is preferable because it will protect you are not always standing constant you are moving sometimes you are unaware when the technician is shooting where you may be in a side position where you have a little protection of the apron usually it is in the front uh there are various other ways by which you can protect there are ceiling suspensions uh, like this uh, which are not available here there are table skirts which can be folded like this and can be protected uh, you can stand behind it if you are unable to wear a apron before time and the way you store the apron is also very important they should be stored on a stand or a hanger like this they should never be folded as folding the lead apron will break the lead inside it and you will not know whether the lead has broken inside and uh, your gonads are directly exposed you feel you are wearing a apron but there is no lead inside that apron it has settled in the bottom because of the gravity because of the breakage because of the folding repeated folding of the apron these apron should be routinely checked and faulty pieces should be discarded there is no provision of repairing it it is preferably should be discarded so they should never be kept like this they should always be stored and kept in the hanger before and after the use the second way by which you can practice the alara is minimizing the radiation by using the thyroid guard a thyroid collar decreases the exposure to the neck and the thyroid by 2.5 times than the normal when you have not used it protection gloves which are in the market they also reduce the exposure by about 60% but the best way is to avoid the exposure of the hand directly uh, in the beam goggles uh another way by which you can practice they should be at least 0.5 mm lead equivalent thickness they provide 70% reduction of the scattered uh, it is the tube position which matters whenever you are receiving the scattered uh, uh, radiation so if the tube is positioned below the ot table it reduces the radiation dose to the islands by three or more times uh second most the fourth most important thing is where you are standing where you are position yourself from the patient so the variable one of the important variables to minimize the radiation exposure is by increasing the distance the intensity of the radiation is inversely proportional to the distance as you can see here <coughs> if you are at half a meter your exposure to the head neck and the eyes is about 3.2 millisilverate per hour if uh, 
to the chest is about 2.4 and to the gonads is about 1.2 and this you can reduce if you are standing at 1 meter uh, distance so it becomes almost one third uh, so uh, one meter you can reduce the dose significantly so one fourth the dose of the scattered radiation will be reduced if you are standing at a at a distance of 1 meter 1 meter from the patient to avoid receiving the scattered radiation so at 1 meter a surgeon will absorb about 0.1% of the patient dose due to the scattered radiation so if you are Uh, at a distance of two meter, uh, two uh, meter zone, the CM unit, the amount of radiation you will receive is only one millisilverad. Within two meters of the CM unit, the lead protection is a must. Beyond two meters, uh, whether you use the apron or you don't use the apron, it does not make any difference. So that was the distance where ideally you should stand whenever you are shooting. try to maintain a distance of more than 1 meter distance of one more than 1 meter from the uh, patient so that you receive very even though you are using a protection you receive less exposure and avoid the radiation hazard <coughs> surgeon and his team must maintain a minimum distance of 18 inches from the zone of the primary beam to avoid ill effect so these are the this is the primary beam so at least 18 inches whenever you are shooting should be maintained from this uh, area the greatest exposure to the surgeon is his right hand if he is right hand dominant and increase in the exposure dose of the extremity is proportional to the exposure time so uh, while doing a upper extremity while uh, doing a hip surgery while doing a uh, limb surgery it is always your right hand which is exposed and the way to protect is your hand uh, you uh, should not be in the direct beam of the x-ray which is captured by the image intensifier so avoid using your right hand for positioning the extremity stand away from that direct handling of the x-ray tube while in the operation and placement of the hand directly in the radiation beam should be avoided so this is the radiation beam so continuous drilling uh, shooting while your hand is measuring with the depth gauge or with the uh, screw driver or with the drill or doing a manipulation or trying to reduce it should not be practiced your hand has to be away and you treat a uh, x uh, ray cm machine like a x ray tube like you do take a shoot keep yourself away from that and then don't use it uh, for every small thing or don't you increase the exposure the another common mistake is using the uh, grid or the intensifier as a operation table particularly when you are doing a hand surgery because it is easier to position and uh, it gives a clearer quality of the image but it is a dangerous practice underlying the aluminum surface of the plate is a vacuum tube and uh, if it is penetrated by the drill machine it will result in a ex uh, explosion and potential electrocution of the operator and the patient and this paper was published in jbgs 2000 so this practice should be avoided the collimation uh, that is the alignment of the camera uh, or the x ray beam and the intensifier the x ray source and the intensifier so this has to be proportional now usually what happens is when uh, uh, you uh, you get irritated when you are frustrated when uh, uh, you are finding it difficult to have a good reduction you uh, try to move the cm and that hits the ot table or if you are not inside the theater uh, 
in in a hurry to position or to check the images the technician or your assistant they the x ray beam usually hits the ot table and that uh, mal aligns the camera and the x ray source so what happens is when you are shooting the x ray beam the beam will go outside the camera outside the intensifier and either there will be a loss of contrast of the image there will be increased noise or there will be image degradation or the x ray source will throw additional dose to the patient and to the surgeon to be captured to capture the image on the intensifier so usually what happens is this collimation uh, why do why does a siam has a light because you cannot collimate uh, the alignment every year at some stage this collimation is lost so particularly when you are buying a refurbished uh, image intensifier uh, why uh, when uh, your image intensifier is old so the collimation is lost so that means you are throwing lot of radiation to the patient and to the ot personnel so that should be you have to be very careful when you are buying a refurbished image intensifier when uh, you and you must do this collimation every year so this part usually should should be handled very carefully so it is through this your x ray tube your radiation is going if there is a mal alignment if this is damage or this is misaligned then your radiation exposure is increased now where should we position the uh, x ray tube it should always be on the bottom of the table so if you are practicing that the figure a or the figure on the left side so that is the exposure radiation exposure in the air when the x ray tube is below the patient when the x ray tube is above the patient so the exposure is you can see this green area so you have a huge large exposure so always 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 uh, one of the principle of alara is position the x ray tube under the patient under the table and not above the patient this will reduce the radiation scatter to all of us second how close should be the x ray tube to the table or to the patient now uh, if you want to see a magnification what usually we do is we bring the x ray tube closer like on the right side the picture on the right side if you want to see a good magnified view we bring the x ray tube towards the patient towards the table and uh, you can have a uh, good exposure of that area but this high exposure will blur the image uh, uh, because bringing that tube to closer to the patient like this will give you a good magnification but it will blur the image not only that but it will give a very high exposure a very high exposure that means more the scattered radiation so the tube uh, Uh, should be at a distance a good distance so that uh, you get a low exposure and a good quality image so that can be magnified on the monitor rather than trying to manipulate here with the x-ray tube so keep a safe distance that will depend that the tube should not touch the floor it should be little away and then take a exposure like that where should you stand when you are taking a lateral view in a, as we have seen by the various uh, doses the lateral view uh, gives a higher requires a higher exposure because it has to pass through a torso on both the side because there is a increase uh, tissue thickness so the figure on the eight uh, on the your left side or the figure a you can see the surgeon is standing exactly opposite the x-ray beam it is he is not he is standing near the camera so he should not stand uh, near the camera he should stand as what he is standing on the picture b 
opposite the x-ray beam so this will reduce the exposure his exposure by five times so bring the intensifier as close to the patient as possible and stand on the opposite side of the x-ray beam when you are taking a lateral view like this so uh, bring the uh, the x-ray tube closer to the patient stand towards the x-ray beam so that the radiation will go through the patient and captured by the intensifier or the camera and the scattered radiation will be reduced if you are standing on the opposite side of the x-ray tube your exposure is five times more whenever you are taking a uh, x-ray all the metal wear like in this totally replacement there is a k wire or a cement pin there is a chanlay's retractor besides this there is a instrument to hold the trial so all these metal they require a higher exposure that means higher exposure higher is the scattered radiation so whenever you shooting taking a shoot try to remove as much metals as possible before you take a shoot that will reduce the uh, uh, scattered radiation in a obese patient as you can see here on your right is the head side patient is intubated now the red arrows are the abdomen of the patient and below that is the hip so huge obese patient they require increased skin doses in so increase the dose increase the scattered radiation so how you can protect ourselves one is by standing as away as possible reducing the number of shoots and you must wear additional protective devices and keep a safe distance from the patient when you are shooting a hefty patient now uh, the image intensifier earlier uh, uh, had a 12 inch now they are uh, also available in half the size but the patient entrance dose in a 12 inch standard is 100 but when you are using a small image intensifier diameter the dose is three times more so more the magnification that is a smaller diameter more is the patient entrance dose so your exposure is more so often what happens is uh, uh, when you are doing a hip surgery or any surgery in which you have to rotate the c arm to take a lateral view uh, the technician or the ot assistant they uh, keep on moving the base of the cia and they have to take multiple shoots so before or if you have taken one shoot uh, your base has to be made stationary and around the wheel you put sticking plaster or a uh, uh, landmark like this so that when you take a next shoot even if you have moved the base of the cia you again park the cia in this uh, around this landmark so that you don't have to take multiple shoots and always a laser aiming device is very useful so that uh, you avoid excessive radiation you uh, excessive shoot signing so that will give you a, a where exactly you want to take a uh, shoot so a landmark which is can be aimed at while uh, you are taking a ap shoot or a lateral shoot so laser aiming device which is available in most of the cm must be practiced to avoid multiple shoots dual monitors they are very useful particularly uh, when you have captured the image it can be transferred to the other side and when you have to compare a ap and lateral view you know, uh, so that earlier image is stationary so try to have uh, uh, to try to reproduce or try to ask the technician or a ot personnel to uh, keep it or store it on the opposite side so that you don't avoid multiple exposure between the technician and the ot personnel you must develop a language protocol uh, intraoperative communication between the orthopedic surgeon and the radiology technician will reduce the time of capture and the desired images and the number of shoots like even if you have to take a continuous at the end of surgery even if you have to take a continuous shoot it is a communication language between the technician and the surgeon will uh, 
give you a limited exposure of a particular rotation where in which you can see a good ap and lateral and how is the position of the plate and the screw uh duration of the exposure duration of the exposure intermittent fluoroscopy like a pulse here uh, a 3 second burst with a long off interval is preferable that decreases the radiation exposure by about 70% so continuous fluoroscopy should be avoided it is a intermittent fluoroscopy if you have to see like what you have seen a continuous imaging in the earlier slide so that can be reduced by 70% if you are using a intermittent or a pulse a fluoroscopy in a pulse mode so uh, communication should be uh, either repeat about the position about the ad adjustment about the image in the monitor correction needed in the imaging and the monitor reduces the confusion between the ot personnel uh, exposure time like somebody uh, should be always checked uh, you can train your technician to see the exposure time and inform the surgeon because most of the time we are so engrossed in the surgery we are unaware of uh, what is the exposure time maintenance of the equipment and protective shield decrease in the efficiency of the cm unit is compensated by increased exposure to get similar brightness and contrast of the imaging the amount of radiation delivered varies by more than 100% in more than 30% of the machine at the one year interval so it is therefore desirable to have a half yearly quality assurance with regard to the output of the radiation and system resolution of all the units so to protect yourself at least once in a year if not twice in a year you must have a calibration of your unit at a regular interval the dosimeters or the tld badges which are used to monitor may be stored in a lead boxes huh? international commission of radiological protection recommends an occupational hazard exposure time of 12 millisieverts per year uh, these recommendations are old but uh, and usually they take a longer time for it to be given to the uh, source and then you get back the report so best way is looking your dose reports at the end of the each surgery and calculating and trying to reduce as much uh, as possible the dose as well as the exposure time conclusion avoid scattered radiation x ray tube under the table and away from the patient and away from you use if you have to use a fluoroscopy use in a pulse mode use landmarks on the floor uh, the patient's drape or a laser beam so that you don't have a repeated exposure or repeated shoot protective gear are a must your hand should be out of the beam develop a good communication language between you and the technician and shout shoot so that uh, the technician will be careful and he will not take decision of shooting himself of his own remember the radiation from the nuclear bomb was 500 to 1000 millisieverts which destroyed hiroshima and Uh, which is equivalent to 50 to 100 whole body ct scan so one has to be very careful when you are doing a ct scan as well you reduce the number of exposure so to avoid the future hazards of radiation so that was all about what you must practice and i must uh, i'll stop sharing and i must tell you uh, these are what happens is what uh, uh, what we see in this presentation after 6 months we forget everything because we are so much engrossed in the surgery we don't practice the principles of alara which are very important 
and we increase ourselves to this radiation so the best way is all those points which i had discussed we must practice uh, and follow them regularly thank you very much thanks sangeet any questions to sangeet sangeet which side of uh, screen to stand can you go back to that slide X-ray beam side. No, but that is, as per my knowledge, that is not the case. Ah, sir yeah. is telling opposite. Sir is telling no. opposite. Yeah. No, no, no. See. No, no. Same. Sir. So, same. The X-ray tube. So this is X-ray tube. No, no. This so, is not. No, the next uh, slide. No, no. I am coming to that. No, when you are taking, uh, the X-ray tube has to be below. Hey, so that is here okay. it is. Ah, that is this, yeah. this yeah. So this is the X-ray tube, and this is the intensifier. The camera is here. So whenever there is, when we shoot, the beam will pass like this. My cursor is seen. Yes, yes. I am on the fi figure B. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. uh, I will not get uh, any radiation here. Okay. If I am on the opposite side, while I take a shoot from the X-ray beam. Some will go to the camera and some will come to me directly. Am I clear, no. sir? Uh, no. Basically. But you are telling the same uh, opposite principle which we have told in previous slide. Yeah. yeah. So basically, Sangeet, as per my knowledge and as per the new slide also, how the uh, intensifier is the principle. So, uh, how, the, how the intensifier is the principle? The reason is, whatever hmm. beam is coming, there is a hmm. radiographic plate here, and the beam is absorbed by the image intensifier, the II. You mm -hmm. are not worried about the direct beam because the beam is now collimated. Beam would not scatter beyond the radio intensifier circle. So, um, if, if um, I, I think we would need some clarification on this. Yes, My, in A, we no, are sir. directly coming in the beam. No, so X ray we are outside. radiation will pass from X ray beam. We should not, uh, I think, this is right, sir. So, uh, this, the see, the problem is uh, the scattered radiation. So, uh, if now we are on figure A. Right. Are you okay? Yes. So, yes. when I shoot the when I shoot, the X ray beam will pass from X ray tube to the scatter. Uh, okay. tube. One second. So the it will be like this. Okay. Okay. Now, whatever I receive here, some, if my uh, collimation is not right, I may receive some like this, but 80% will go through the uh, patient into the camera. But from the patient, I will receive a direct radiation. This is why, because in a lateral view, the amount of exposure is more. In an AP view, the amount of exposure is less. So the scattered radiation is less in that. Now here, what happens is, if I'm standing behind the X-ray beam, so the radiation from the patient, the chances are it is coming back to me are very less. So the radiation will be more towards this side. I'm away from it. So I'll receive very less radiation. Is that clear, sir? Mm, I think I would agree to disagree. But I'll, I'll find out. I'll find yeah. out. Okay. Okay. So I, I will agree with Dr. Sangeet. I will also go through that yeah. again and we'll share uh, next week. Yes. I'll just... And I hope any, this will any, help. Yeah, help any, you yeah, yeah, this is in, this is where we our mind has to be open to accept the challenge that it is radiation is a big big hazard. We must protect ourselves. And very very nice point of Alara. All of us, all of us must absorb that point. Uh, any and, question, uh, And and uh, I would I, I, suggest I that every six months you go through this because you tend to forget after six months you are so engrossed in the surgery, you are so engrossed in the patient. 
we don't care for ourselves so it is all uh, doing multiple surgeries and using a siam as a uh, you know a tool which will help us in getting the best result but actually in the bargain we are radiating ourselves more yes yes dr nitin ha i got two comments and uh, two queries to ask very comprehensive talk by uh, sangeet sir i liked it uh, regarding you mentioned that you have to mark on the ground so every time you need not change the same same in the same continuation the technician also should note down the angle of the siam because always it is not ap and lateral because high degree mm -hmm. it is always already mentioned on the siam of the um, that also you should uh, keep it in mind or it right on the paper so by lateral it is 5 degree or it is oblique by 45 degree so you did not change the angle so that also reduces the exposure time and uh, radiation also another thing right if you have got two two siams most of the surgeon they have got two side because initially we use 6 inches and then you later on you convert it to as you uh, uh, become uh, experienced then you convert it to 9 inches mujhe uh, old surgeons they had initial 6 one and 9 also so you can keep both the siams ready and adjust it in ap and lateral for few surgeries not for all surgeries so that yeah. also prevents the radiation exposure and uh, surgical time this yeah. was my comment And two queries I have got. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, it's a very good suggestion. Though the point I have used that one, but that created so much confusion among all the OT personnel and the technicians. So we stopped using that. Thank you. I am sharing a screen. Yes, sir. Can you see this slide? I don't know whether so. I mean, this is contradictory to what I am. Yeah. So I, I don't know. This is right. But uh, so this is again from you. This is a, okay. This, okay. And this was in But, the uh, recent master's see, course also. So this was the photo we came. So we'll have to we'll have to uh, keep research. Reconfirm. Yeah. Yeah. Reconfirm. Yeah. So, so it it uh, looks logical to me basically because say X-ray tube. The radiation passes, scattering happens as soon as the X-ray beam strikes the patient, and you get scattering. Scattering does not happen after the beam passes through this uh, body. And okay, I uh, suppose this diagram is right. What what this slide shows? Okay, I'll get back to you. See, we are not expert yeah. in all this. Yeah, we will have to. What, we'll have to, what we have. So ultimately, this this knowledge is only from you. Yeah. Yeah. so uh, we have to understand from the literature is, is we have to point? understand from the images uh, we will get back to it again sir yes 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 no problem uh, sang sangit sir two three queries the maximum exposure occurs at the time of k wire fixation or at the time of interlocking by free hand technique interlocking uh, screw passing uh, technique you have to be in the uh, uh, line of the beam for that uh, Passing the interlocking screw or for uh, seeing, passing seeing the, the round hole, hole. seeing the round hole. Ah, it maximum exposure occurs during that. Or passing a K wire when you change by seeing under the CM, you change the direction of the by coal simply for coal is or something like the exposure occurs. Uh, is there anything like a radiation protective gloves which can fit like normal gloves? I have I I, I have got radiation preventive gloves, but they cannot be used intraoperatively because they are loose. They are not well fitting to the hand. So, is there? Are uh, they available? Uh, so, the surgical feel you will never get as a surgeon when you are using those thick gloves. That is one. And uh, why do you trust the equipment? The best is to avoid uh, your hand coming in the beam. You cannot. You cannot have an uh, avoid that. You have had, but for for a free hand technique, you have to be in the line. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. another thing, sometimes you have to hold the hand. By yourself, either you'll be holding or your assistant will be. Both are yes, at risk. Both are at risk. So Nitin, ah. use use a use a longer uh, instrument. Mm -hmm. So which which is which is held at an angle of the beam, and you are outside the beam area. So your longer instrument would help you out. But again, you uh, take it in the line for hammering, final hammering. 
it has to be in the line only no when you uh, we, when you start drilling or hammering it has to be in the line it cannot be oblique so, so, so you, uh, you take I'm, a point you take a point dent it so while making a distal interlocking there are two important things one is aiming number two is creating a mark or what is known as denting so you create a dent onto the bone so that the drill doesn't slip once yeah. a dent is created then you are drilling then you can come back then you don't need a radiation i think that is what i follow so aiming denting and then drilling so that, that not always, not. yeah then once you dent it see when the drill bit is then finds the hole so you can dent with a special drill bit which is available a kyr tip drill bit available from synthes or you can use a stenman pin of a lesser uh, uh, caliber that is 2 mm 3 mm 2.5 mm and then make a hole with a drill bit uh, sangeet sir another query uh, on the siam uh, panel uh, there are uh, there is a facility 4 frame per second 8 frame per second or 16 frame if you as we prefer last image hole like that what is to be preferred 4 frame per second or 16 for frame per second more the and number of frames, more the number of frames more is the radiation radiation so it should be less so it is very specifically required for very few uh, specific uh, things where you want to see the sequence of change serial uh, not not routinely and another so, thing you mentioned about the iridema so you have mentioned a less uh, a gray score and iridema appearing within 24 hours but the uh, score is increased for 4 to 6 and iridema takes more many days as you have mentioned yeah, yeah like as the dose why? increases as It the dose longer. increases exposure dose increases the iridema to disappear takes a longer time to appear i think no no you can to disappear take, now you take out that please slide can you show that slide i had a query that time uh, i might be wrong yeah this one no ha ah, this one uh x6 gyri appears at 10 days two gyri yeah. appears at immediately six why yes. takes so, to appear 10 days it uh, because it is no, no 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 so the uh, uh, disappearance is within 24 hours when your exposure is less so the, it appears after 10 days and uh, the iridema increases to 2 weeks and it fades away it takes a longer time to disappear when you have a lesser exposure it disappears in 24 hours no no it not so, regarding disappearance it is regarding the appearance Two gray yeah, appears yeah. in several hours, and six gray yeah. because of the exposure. Yeah, it because appear, the exposure. Appearing. Yes, yes, yes. This is what is given in literature. I have quoted the literature. It is not my own. Uh, so basically, a lesser exposure, the disappear. It disappears quickly. More the exposure, it will take some time. It will remain. The iridema will remain for a longer time on the skin. So what Nitin says is appealing, but yeah, we we'll have to again confirm this. But this is this is what is literature. Literature, yes, we we'll have to confirm it. Nitin, this is well, not okay. this is not our speciality. It is uh, what yes, I have yes. assembled from the literature and transferred to you. Okay. Any other question to Sangeet? Ah, regarding the lead gown, you told that it should be hanging vertically down nicely. But 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 I had read somewhere that if it is hanging, then the lead accumulates down. Okay, if it is and broken, then the lead, no, no. If the even lead. by hanging, even by yeah. hanging, because I have got lead gowns which were old, thirty five, thirty forty years old, the lead had come down. Yeah, because and the lead I, has broken. Yeah, broken. this is the commonest thing. It it has broken. That is why it settles with gravity down. Yeah, so you have so, to. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Thank so you. So this the best storage recommended nowadays is horizontal. 
I I put it horizontally. That's why I was asking. Ah yes. So we are. So I put it horizontally. Yeah. So the problem is. Problem is in in vertical you can store in a limited area more number yeah. on horizontally you need a shelf you need as extra space which is usually not available in the theater complex if you so the idea is the lead should not break yes it breaks when you fold the apron right that is the idea. because we are keeping some other things on that it is a utility right. that is that is a common we don't have space in the theater Yeah. So we are folding it and keeping it, and above that we are keeping something else, drums or something else. So that breaks the lead. But Sangeet, you have picked up a very nice topic. It is really actually yeah. of real interest to everyone. However, uh, we keep on using But, it. So yeah. The best, the best part is uh, every six months I am presenting, and I forget the Alara principles at the end of five months, six months. I am free. as what i was doing or using the cm before making this presentation no but uh, so all the mistakes all the mistakes i do at same mistakes i am doing at the end of six months no, because but, i forget yeah but but i am sticking to alara principle and i keep a track of my number of exposure for every surgery say for example now my dhs number of shoots if i am not improving i am not improving in my surgery yes yes so i am keeping a number of shoots in dhs in pfn And in uh, other surgeries as well, so right. that at many times you try to be very perfectionist, but I think we have to also remember this. Yes, exactly, exactly. Uh, in in a bargain to do to have a best X-ray, so yes. we are compromised on our own health. Yes, that is, is all what I want to convey. Yes, yes, that is very important. And for uh, for many presentations in the international national conference. Many surgeons they show they are uh, fond of showing that continuous image. Suppose something we are removing some broken implant, so that is also dangerous. We take lot of uh, to see the to see the joint movements whether the screw has penetrated. Yeah. We take the continuous shoot. That is also not yeah. good. No? Yeah, but true, but sir, very true. For the teachers to teach, I think that's an important requisite also. <laughs> so I, I we saw Kannas's presentation also very. Very fondly shows that because he wants to teach that, no? Unless unless that is learned, but yes, continuous shoot is a more radiation. I agree. Nothing. Any other question, Yogesh? You want to ask something on such an important topic? Yes. So who Excellent. who are all using thyroid uh, collar? I suppose everyone must be using. No, no, nobody. Can... No, no, no. I think you must use it. You must use a either point six plumbum um, or a lead equivalent. Lead equivalent are very, very, okay. uh, very comfortable appliances nowadays. Okay. So nowadays appliances are available where the lead collar is inbuilt. You have a hanging lead collar which can give you a very nice. Thing. If, if there is no other question, I think do we close today's meeting, sir? Uh, yeah. What okay. is the uh, what? Hello. Uh, yeah. Quality of uh, radiation is more with Indian machines and less with imported machines. It is. Some people are saying very difficult to know and yes. calculate the Siemens and GE. They have very less scattered radiation. And Indian machines they are sure have more scattered radiation. One study was Siemens person was showing to me. So as a see as a surgeon, uh, this is never we we are never uh, informed about this. Like uh, one shoot will give how much dose. So have you ever seen any company describing that to you? Before selling uh, equipment, no. so that is all hidden. That is all hidden to us. So what we are concerned is with the larger image, good quality of image. We are little bothered and the cost, and we are little bothered about the exposure. So honestly, um, none of the manufacturer informs us about. 
this part what is your opinion dr chanda yeah i think uh, as what he says is the company people keep and in, uh, inform us that uh, the radiation is less as was informed to me by the philips personnel also and as i confirm from mr sonavne the radiation in charge at the barc so he confirmed that the uh, good imported machines have lesser uh, scattered radiation and also the amount of dose radiation leaking is less their collimation is better he himself confirmed that yes and that sir was... one more thing is that now image intensifier tube is gone and plain uh, plain platform is there now uh, which is used for angiography flat. and plastic flat, flat screen flat screen uh, so for flat, flat screen more more radiation is required what is said the flat screen has an advantage uh, it uh, the amount of scattering is reduced number 1 number 2 the amount of beam radiation which is absorbed by the screen now this flat screen absorbs radiation because there is there is a, a material there which absorbs rather than reflects now what we are worried about is the reflection of radiation beam so when a heavy hectic or a obese patient is there there is more amount of scattering happening and that is where we are more worried in a lean thin patient less amount of scattering is there and this the ii absorbs radiation rather than reflecting and therefore we are uh, advised to stand on to the side of um, the ii b that is what my knowledge is and uh, uh, the important machines with the flat screen nowadays the world has moved towards the flat screen uh, even if the image is shooting onto the edge of the flat screen you don't need to repeat it because the picture quality all throughout the flat screen is same in a round image intensifier if you are on the off side if you are not on the center the picture quality was not good so we were required to shoot again so same amount of exposure was happening two times therefore the amount of radiation is less okay that clear yogesh so how much how much flat panel is required 12 inches or more the, the advantage with flat panel is you are dhs you you are seeing the head you are seeing the neck you are also seeing the trochanter and the downside area so in one beam you can see the whole picture also your level alignment you can see better so we moved away from 6 inches to 9 inches the flat panel now gives you 12 inches which is much much better better in terms of computation in mind better in terms of alignment better in terms of radiation also because you take lesser number of shoots otherwise we okay. used to see the picture for the head then we used to come out then take another picture in 6 inches uh, okay. see which is now gone okay and uh, life of uh, flat panel is assured they do assure it so my my flat panel okay. is working since last so many years so no no issues to me right now but image okay. index wire is a, a commodity which we don't know when it is going to play role okay any other comments any other uh, uh, questions i think that was a wonderful day two uh, things of physics we had to discuss today the auto cleaving and and uh, uh, radiation hazards so very nice compilation sangeet um, um, do we do we close the meeting it's already around 5 yeah. 5 minutes yes, yeah. yeah. um, thank you so much sangeet for bringing out your yeah. points and uh, thank you uh nitin yogesh and everyone else for taking part and uh, putting those good questions also so let us uh, let yes, us yes emoy khan you are coming sir yes emoy khan okay uh, thank you sir yes bye bye any any question was there bye-bye. somebody wanted to ask uh, sir one day uh, please add one uh, fracture stabilizer also fracture acetabulum yeah okay no problem we will we'll add up uh, fracture acetabulum
do we do we uh, sangeet how many um, classes are remaining any idea i really, i really don't know sir okay so we'll have so to we'll have to include pelvis also yeah yeah Pel- pelvis and acetabulum yes it acetabulum is a part of then pelvis no? both has to be covered then if at all it is to be taken no okay we can uh, include that no problem so we'll put this request to tanna sir also and uh, let sir opain so he'll give the nod once this request is there from the delegates and from the surgeons i think uh, sir would uh, definitely uh, either call somebody or uh, we'll take the class no problem i think wrist is also remaining wrist wrist also yes so the topic you would suggest is wrist acetabulum pelvis okay that is noted so we'll make a list and put it to the group anything else foot is remaining no foot means uh, this is remaining no this ah, is remaining okay this frank also pylon frank pylon fracture ah, we discussed little bit pylon and right cord is covered okay so this frank so i'm making a list okay 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 and the, sir avulsion fractures of acl pcl and uh, ligamentous avulsions ha uh, ligamentous avulsion fractures because that is a one type of variety where some uh, thing we should know in okay so i'll i'll make into the list that also so four five six topics okay. here okay. then clavicle scapula also clavicle sir had taken actually yeah it has been covered come mm. clavicle has been covered nitin you are there i, I suppose i i so i not missed a single clavicle is covered yeah. you are there today today all yeah, my so colleagues you... are enjoying bhutan i am enjoying studying <laughs> okay okay <laughs> yes today the representation is less but on that good note and wishing uh, all the best wishes of the festive season so thank you everyone same, same to you thank you and good night okay. yeah. Good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Also, Good night, sir. Thank you, 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 sir.